Okay, okay, here we are. I'm trying to trying to keep the chain going. If you're just joining us from from episode three, we had a really successful run of listening to Moby Dick and beating the level basically in one one go through. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to accomplish that again. This is a more difficult level, um, but it also will be more interesting. And I'm looking forward to see how the book develops and also how the game develops. So. We'll pick up right where we left off, and then we'll we'll get into the plan. We're at twenty one thirty one in chapter chapters eight and nine. I think we're in chapter nine right now. But hearing about the story of Jonah, Jonah, not yet supplicating and, God uh, for mercy, should be good since he but too well knew the darkness of his deserts. When wretched Jonah cries out to them to take him and cast him forth into the sea, for he knew that it was for his sake this great tempest was upon them. They mercifully turn from him mm. and seek by other means to save the ship. But all in vain. The indignant gale howls louder, and then, with one hand raised invokingly to God, with the other they not Big, unreluctantly lay stun. hold of Jonah. Two and now behold Jonah taken up as an anchor and dropped into the sea, when instantly an oily calmness floats out from the east, and the sea is still as Jonah carries down the gale with him leaving smooth water behind. He goes down smooth in a whirling heart of such water. a masterless commotion smooth that he scarce heeds the moment when he drops seething into the yawning jaws awaiting him. There's and the whale to shoots rifle. too all his ivory teeth like so many white bolts upon his prison. Then this is Jonah a toothed prayed whale. Unto I guess the sperm Lord whale has teeth, fish's right? Belly. But observe his prayer and learn a weighty lesson. <laughs> for sinful as he is, Jonah does not Zerbal. weep and wail for direct lesson. deliverance. He feels that his dreadful punishment is just. He leaves all his deliverance to God, contenting himself with this, that spite of all his pains and pangs, he will still look towards his holy temple. And here, shipmates, hmm. is true and faithful repentance, not clamorous for pardon, but grateful for punishment. <laughs> and how pleasing to God was this conduct in oh, Jonah this is, our first is shown in the eventual so. deliverance of him from the sea and the whale. Okay. Shipmates, I do not place oh Jonah before you to be copied for his sin, but yeah, I do don't place sin. him before you as a model for repentance. Sin not, but if you do, take heed to repent of it I like Jonah. I do take that. While he was speaking these words, the howling of the shrieking, slanting storm without seemed to add new power to the preacher, who, when the describing storm? Jonah's like sea storm, time. seemed tossed uh -oh. by a storm himself. His deep chest heaved as with a groundswell, his tossed arms seemed the warring elements at work, and the thunders you? that rolled away from off it, his right? swarthy brow, and the light leaping from his eye made all his simple hearers look on him yet. with a quick fear that was strange to them. There now came a lull in his look as he silently turned over the leaves of the book once more, Ugh. and at last, standing motionless with closed what eyes, my challenges? for the moment seemed communing Do with a God rune. and himself. Get the auto map. But again he leaned Death towards the people, and bowing his head lowly with an aspect of the deepest yet manliest humility, he spake these words. We need more manly humility. Shipmates, God has laid but one hand upon you. Both his hands press upon me. I'm gonna do these runes. I have read you by what murky light may be. You mine, can die in here without that resetting. Jonah teaches to all sinners, so and therefore to you. I feel like that's and okay. And still more to me, to for I am a greater sinner than you. And now, how gladly would I come anyway. down from this masthead and sit on the hatches there where you sit and listen as you listen, while some one of you reads me that other and more awful lesson which Jonah teaches to me as a pilot of the living God. How, being anointed pilot, prophet, or speaker of true things, and bidden by the Lord to sound those unwelcome truths in the ears of a wicked Nineveh, Jonah, appalled at the hostility he should raise, fled from his mission and sought to escape and his duty die. and his God by taking ship at Joppa. But God is everywhere. Tarshish he never reached. As we have seen, God came upon him in the whale oh, no. and swallowed him down to the living gulfs of doom. And doom. the swift slantings tore him along 
into the midst of the seas. We win. Where the eddying depths now we get a sucked rune. him 10,000 fathoms down, and the weeds were wrapped about his head, and all the watery world Wait, I thought he was in the whale. I him. guess there's weeds in the Yet whale. Yet even then, beyond the reach of any plummet, out of the belly of hell, when the whale grounded upon the ocean's utmost bones, even then God heard the engulfed, repenting prophet when he cried. Then God spake unto the fish, and from the shuddering cold and blackness of the sea the whale came breaching up towards the warm and pleasant sun, and all the delights of air and earth, and vomited out Jonah upon Yuck. the dry land, when the word of the Lord came a second time. And Jonah, was actually bruised and beaten, his ears like two seashells, still multitudinously murmuring of the there ocean, Jonah did the Almighty's bidding. And what was what that, shipmates? To preach the truth to the face of falsehood. That wow. was it. That's it? This, shipmates, is the other lesson. You here to hear first, and folks. woe to that pilot of the living God who slights it. Woe to him whom this Whoa. world charms from gospel duty. Whoa. Woe to him who seeks to pour oil upon the waters when God has brewed them into a gale. Woe to him Wait. who seeks to please rather problem? than to appall. Woe to him whose good name is more to him than goodness. Woe to him who in this world courts not dishonor. Woe to him Whoa. who would not be true, even though to be false were salvation. Yea, woe to him who, Whoa. as the great pilot Paul has it, while preaching to others is himself a castaway. Whoa. He dropped and fell away from himself for a moment, then lifting his There's face to them again, you. To get it later. showed a deep I don't joy know if in his eyes in this room. as he cried That's out with a heavenly enthusiasm, But oh, shipmates, on the starboard right. hand of every woe there is a sure delight, and higher the top of that delight than the bottom of the woe is deep. Is not the main truck higher than the Kelson is low? Delight uh, is to him what was the a question? far, far upward and inward delight. Who against the proud gods and commodores no, of no, no, no. ever stands forth his own inexorable self? Delight is to him whose strong arms yet support him when the ship of this so base treacherous world has gone down beneath him. Delight it is to him who gives no quarter in the truth and kills, burns, and destroys all sin, though he nice. pluck it out from under the robes of senators and judges. Some delight, top gallant delight is to him who acknowledges no law or lord but the Lord this his God, good. Oh. and is only a patriot to heaven. Delight is to him whom all the waves of the billows of the seas and the boisterous mob can never shake from this sure keel of the ages. There's one. An eternal delight and deliciousness <laughs> will be I hope we get his, another one over who, here. coming to lay him down, can say with his final breath, O oh, Father, chiefly known to me by thy rod, mortal or immortal, here I die. I have striven to be thine more than to be this world I'd rather or mine be known own. By something other Yet than this my is rod. nothing. I leave eternity that crude? to thee. That's too crude. For what is man we'll that, that he should we'll live out, out the, the lifetime of his God? The final playthrough, the final video. He said no more, but slowly waving a benediction, yeah. covered his face with his hands, and so remained yeah, kneeling until all the guns. people had departed. I just like the shotgun And he was left so alone in the place. Okay, don't End like End of that chapters guy. eight and nine. Decision time. Oh, where are you going? Come back. This is a LibriVox well, recording. Made chapter 10. All LibriVox recordings are in the public up, domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading this by Stuart Wills. If I fall up Moby the jump, Dick I restart. By Herman Melville, chapters That's, 10 through real, 12. Real run enders in this, uh, chapter 10, this level. A Bosom Friend. Returning to the Spouter Inn from the chapel... I found Ooh. Queequeg there quite alone. He Back having to the left the chapel in. before the benediction. You gonna tell us about the time. oil painting again? He was sitting on a bench before the fire with his feet on the stove hearth, and in one this hand was holding mandatory. close to his face that little Negro idol of his, peering hard into its face Look how much and with a jackknife gently whittling away Ooh, at its nose, good. meanwhile humming to himself in his heathenish way. But being no. now interrupted, he put up the image, and pretty soon, going to the table, took up a large book there, and placing it on his lap, began counting the pages with deliberate regularity, 
At every 50th page, oh, no, no, as no, I no, fancied, no. stopping a moment, looking vacantly around him, and giving utterance to a long drawn gurgling whistle of astonishment. That's how I read He would too, then begin be again at the next 50, seeming to commence at the number one each time, as though he could not count more than 50. And it was only by such a large number of 50s being found together that his astonishment at the multitude of pages was excited. With much interest, I sat watching him. Savage though he was, and hideously marred about the face, at least to my taste, okay. his countenance yet had something in it which was by no means disagreeable. You cannot hide the soul. Through all his unearthly tattooings, Maybe I thought he's I just saw the traces handsome, of a but also tattooed. heart. Maybe it's and not in a his soul large, thing. deep eyes, Ishmael. fiery black and bold, there seemed tokens of a spirit that would dare a thousand devils. And besides all this, there was a certain lofty bearing okay, about the pagan, crack the which even his uncouthness could not altogether maim. He looked like a man who had never cringed and had never had a creditor. Whether it was, too, that his head being shaved, his forehead was drawn out in freer and brighter relief, and looked more expansive than it otherwise would, this I will not venture to decide. But certain it was, his head was phrenologically an excellent one. All right. It may seem ridiculous, but it reminded me of General Washington's head, <laughs> as seen in the popular busts of him. It had the same long, regularly <laughs> graded, they... retreating slope. I was going to make a joke about blockbuster. Which were likewise very projecting, to like two long promontories like, thickly wooded on top. Queequeg was George Washington. Oh, should I take? I feel like I should take health. Whilst as much I was as I like ammunition, scanning I feel like health is the way to go. Meanwhile, to be looking out at the storm we'll alternate the health and ammo, and then we'll he never heeded my presence, starts to matter never more. troubled himself with so much as a single glance, but appeared wholly occupied a with counting the pages of the marvelous book, considering how sociably we had been sleeping together the night previous, and especially considering the affectionate arm I had found thrown over me waking in the morning, I thought this indifference of his very strange. But savages are strange beings. At times, you do not know exactly how to take them. At first, they are overawing. Their calm the self-collectedness of simplicity seems a Socratic wisdom. Yeah, I had noticed also that Queequeg never consorted at all, or but very little, with the other seamen in the inn. He made no advances whatever, appeared to have no desire to enlarge the circle of his acquaintances. <laughs> all this struck me as mighty singular, Yet upon second thoughts, there was something almost sublime in it. Here was a man some 20,000 miles from home, by way of Cape Horn, that is, which was the only way he could get there, thrown among people as strange to him as though he were in the planet Jupiter. All right, here we go. And yet he seemed entirely at his ease, preserving the utmost serenity, content with his own companionship, always equal to himself. Surely this was a touch of fine philosophy, though no doubt he had never heard there was such a thing as that. But perhaps oh, I should have done that from above. We mortals should not be conscious of oh, well. so living or Next so time. striving. So soon as I hear that such and such a man gives himself out for a philosopher, I conclude that, like the dyspeptic old woman, he must have broken his digester. As I sat there in that now lonely room, yeah, there we go. the fire Challenge burning complete. low in that mild stage when, after its Minor first intensity has warmed the air, it then Maybe only glows it. to be looked at, the evening shades and phantoms gathering around the casements and peering in upon a Might silent, solitary plane, the storm booming without in solemn swells, I began to be sensible of strange Who feelings. Else? Hey. I felt a hey. melting in me. No more my splintered yeah, heart and maddened hands nice turned roll, against dude. the wolfish world. This soothing savage had redeemed it. There he sat, his very indifference speaking a nature in which there lurked no oh, civilized hypocrisies I need to and ruined deceits. Wild he was, a very sight of sights to see, yet I began to feel myself mysteriously drawn towards him. And those same things that would have repelled most others they were the very magnets that thus drew me. I'll try a pagan friend, thought I, <laughs> since Christian kindness has proved but hollow courtesy. Yeah. I drew my At least you're learning, Ishmael. And oh, made this some guy. friendly sure signs enough, after hints, the fight's over. doing my best to talk with him meanwhile. At first, he little noticed these advances. I had so but much trouble with upon these my referring to out of everything, last night's you know? hospitalities, he made out to ask me whether we were again to be bedfellows. I told him yes. 
Whereat I thought he looked pleased, perhaps a little complimented. We then turned over the book together, and I endeavored to explain to him the purpose of the printing and the meaning of the. I think everybody should be as open-minded. Thus, I soon engaged his interest. And from that, we went to jabbering the best we could about the various outer sites to be seen in this Modern famous town. We'll get Airbnb, Soon I proposed a social smoke, to go and producing his pouch and tomahawk, he quietly know. offered me a okay. puff. And then we sat exchanging puffs from that from. wild pipe of his, and keeping it regularly passing between us. If there yet Not lurk any ice of indifference rather take them out one at a time breast, together, this but... pleasant, genial smoke we had soon thawed it out and okay, left where us am I going? cronies. He seemed to take to me quite as naturally and unbiddenly as I to him. And okay, when our below. smoke was over, he pressed his we forehead can. against mine, clasped me round the waist, and said that henceforth we were married, <laughs> meaning in his country's <laughs> phrase I forgot about that, that we were bosom friends. He would gladly yes, die that's what for it me means. if the need should friends. be. In a countryman, this sudden flame of friendship would have seemed far too premature, a thing to be much distrusted. But in this simple savage, those old All right. rules were I not definitely apply. want the lock After on supper first. and another social chat and smoke, we it went to our room together. Big abuse he made me a upgrade. present of his embalmed head, took out his uh, enormous tobacco wallet, and groping under the tobacco, drew out some thirty dollars in silver. Thirty. Then spreading them Wait, on the table and that's mechanically gotta be a, dividing them into two equal portions, Judas pushed one of them toward me and said it was mine. I was going and to remonstrate, but he silenced me by first. pouring them into my trousers oh, pockets. I let them stay. Well, hopefully we'll He then some went other about his soon. evening prayers, took out his idol, and removed the paper fireboard. By certain signs and symptoms, I thought he seemed anxious for me to join him. But well knowing what was to follow, I deliberated a moment whether, in case he invited me, I would comply or otherwise. Okay, I was a good Christian, here. born and bred in the yeah. bosom of the infallible Presbyterian Church. How then could I unite with this wild idolater in worshipping his piece of wood? But what is worship, thought I? Do you suppose now, Ishmael, that the magnanimous God of heaven and earth, pagans and all included, can possibly be jealous of an insignificant bit of black wood? Impossible. But what is worship? To do the will of God. That, that might seem like worship. overkill, but it's worth it. And what is the will weapons. of God? To do to my fellow man what I would have my fellow man do to me. That worship is a tiny idol. God. Now, Queequeg is my fellow man. And what do I wish that this Queequeg would do to me? Why, well, unite with <laughs> you don't me have to say it on the book. particular Presbyterian form of worship. Consequently, I must then unite with him in his. Ergo, I must turn idolater. So I kindled the shavings. I used it. I mean, that's a good, the it's a good little change idol, thought. Offered him burnt biscuit. I'm being crude, Queequeg, but uh, salamed before him twice or thrice. Uh, kissed his nose, and that done, we undressed and went to bed. It's nice. At peace with our own consciences and all the world. Okay, I think everything's But we did not go there. to sleep without some little chat. How it is, I know not, but there is no place like a bed Maybe for confidential place. disclosures between friends. Man and wife, they say, there open the very bottom of their souls to each other, and some old couples often lie and chat over old times till nearly morning. Thus, then, in our <laughs> hearts' honeymoon, lay I and Queequeg, a cozy, loving pair. Chapter oh, 11. This thing for the quest, Nightgown. Right? We had lain Carefully thus in bed, chatting and napping at short intervals, and Queequeg now and then affectionately throwing his brown tattooed legs over mine, and then drawing them back. So entirely sociable and free and easy were we, when at last, by reason of our confabulations, what little nappishness Second remained open. in us altogether departed, and we felt like getting we up again, go though daybreak was yet some way down the future. I remember there's a... Yes, we became very wakeful, hiding so much so up. that our recumbent position began to grow to wearisome, to that thing. and by little and little we found ourselves sitting up, the clothes well, well tucked not. around us, look. leaning against the headboard with our four knees drawn up yes, close together sure. and our two noses bending over them as if our knee pans were warming pans. We felt very nice and snug, what is the more so pan? since it was so chilly out of doors. Indeed, out of bed clothes too, seeing that there was no fire in the everything. room. The more so, I say, because truly to enjoy bodily warmth, some small part of you must be cold. For there is no quality in this world that is not what it is merely by contrast. Nothing exists in itself. 
If you flatter yourself that you are all over comfortable, and have been so for a long time, then you cannot be said to be comfortable any more. But if, well, like Queequeg and me in the bed, the tip of your nose or the crown of your head be slightly chilled, why then indeed, in the general consciousness, you feel most delightfully and unmistakably warm. Did For this reason, a sleeping apartment should never be furnished with a fire, which is one of the luxurious discomforts of the rich. For the height of this sort of deliciousness is to have okay, nothing the but the blanket that's the next between thing. you and your snugness and the cold of the outer air. Then ouch, there you ouch, lie ouch. like the one warm spark in the heart of an arctic crystal. What we had been arctic? sitting in this crouching manner for some Pokemon time, thing, when all at once it? I thought I would open my eyes. For when between sheets, whether by day or by night, and whether asleep or awake, I have a way of always keeping right, my eyes that. shut, in order the more to concentrate on the snugness of being in bed. Because no man can ever feel his own identity aright except his eyes be closed, as if darkness were indeed the proper element of our essences, though light be more congenial to our clayey part. Okay. Upon oh, opening my oh, eyes then, on and coming out of my own pleasant and self-created darkness into the All right, we may be dealing with some heavy ears here. Let me agree this of the unilluminated twelve I don't know what shows night, up here. I, I experienced a disagreeable revulsion. Nor did I at all object to the hint from Queequeg that perhaps it were best to strike a light, seeing that we were so wide awake. And besides, he felt a strong desire to have a few quiet puffs from his tomahawk. Be it said that though I had felt oh, such a, a strong a pipe? to his smoking it was in the bed the night before, yet see how elastic our stiff prejudices grow when love comes once to bend them. For now I like okay, nothing better out. than to have Queequeg smoking by me, even in bed. Because he seemed to be full Don't of such smoke serene bed, household joy then. I no more felt unduly concerned for the landlord's policy of insurance. I was only alive to the condensed, confidential comfortableness of sharing a pipe and a blanket with a real friend. With our shaggy jackets drawn about our shoulders, we now passed the tomahawk from one to the other, till slowly there grew oh, over us a blue hanging tester of smoke, illuminated by the flame of the new lit lamp. Whether it was that this undulating tester oh, so rolled the this. savage away to far distant scenes, I oh, know not. But he now spoke of his native island, and eager to hear his history, I begged him to go on and tell it. I feel like there's more bad complied, things happen in this room. Though at the time I but ill comprehended so I mean, not a few of his words, a secret back yet here. subsequent disclosures, when I had become more familiar with his broken phraseology, now enable me to present the whole story My such as it may I can relate to having in a the broken phraseology. I, That's, I often feel as though I've... Chapter 12. Okay, we got all the changes. Biographical. Maybe it's... Queequeg was a native of Cocovoco, an island far away to the west and south. It is not down in any map. True places never are. What? When Come a new hatched savage running wild True places about his native woodlands in a grass clout, followed by the nibbling yeah, goats as if he were a green skirts. sapling, even then in Queequeg's ambitious soul lurked a strong desire to see something more of Christendom than a specimen whaler or two. His father was a high chief, a king, his uncle a high priest, and Not on the maternal way. side he boasted aunts who were the wives of unconquerable warriors. There was excellent blood in his veins, royal stuff, though sadly vitiated, I fear, by the cannibal propensity he nourished in his untutored youth. A Sag Harbor Did ship visited his father's eat? bay, and Queequeg eat? sought a passage to the There's Christian a Sag lands, Harbor in Washington as well. But the ship, um, having her full complement of seamen, spurned his suit, and not all the king his father's well, influence could prevail. No, certainly, but... but Queequeg vowed a vow. Alone in his canoe, he paddled off to a distant strait, not right. which he knew the I'm ship must pass important. through when she quitted the island. On one side was a coral reef, quitted on the other quit? a low tongue of land, covered Answer with mangrove thickets that grew out into the water. Hiding his canoe, still afloat among these thickets, with its prow seaward, he sat down in the stern, paddle low in hand, and when the ship was gliding by, right? like a flash he darted out, gained her side, I'll go down there. and I'll with go one backward first. dash of his foot, of capsized and sank the canoe, climbed up the chains, oh, no, no, and no. throwing himself That's at full death. length upon the deck, Avoiding grappled a death, ring bolt please. there, and Thank swore you. not to let go, though hacked in pieces. In vain the captain threatened to throw him overboard, suspended a cutlass over his naked wrists. Queequeg was the son of a king, and Queequeg budged not. 
Struck by his desperate dauntlessness and his wild desire to visit Christendom, ah, the yes. captain at last Here's relented and told him he might make himself at home. But this fine young savage, this sea prince of Wales, never saw the <laughs> captain's cabin. They put him down among the sailors and made a whale. <laughs> I actually, I laughed like until Tsar I choked. Peter, he said sea to prince toil of Wales. in the shipyards the of foreign way. cities, Queequeg disdained no seeming ignominy. Wow. If thereby That's, um, he might happily gain the power of enlightening his untutored but countrymen. It's quite funny. For at bottom, so he told me, he was actuated by a profound desire to learn among the Christians the arts whereby to make his people still happier than they were, and more than that, still better than they were. But okay, alas, the like practices of whalemen soon convinced him that even Christians could be both miserable and wicked, infinitely more so than all his father's heathens. Arrived at last in old Sag Harbor and seeing what the sailors did there, and going on to Nantucket, their real enemies and seeing how they spent it. their wages in that place also, poor Queequeg gave it up for lost. Thought he, it's a wicked world in all meridians. I'll die a pagan. <laughs> and thus, an old idolater at heart, he yet lived among these how did you that? wore their clothes, and tried to talk their gibberish. Oh. Hence the queer ways about him, though now some time from home. By hints, I asked him whether he did not propose going back and having a coronation, since he might now consider his father dead and gone, he being very old and feeble at the last accounts. He answered no, not yet, and added that he was fearful Christianity, or rather Christians, had unfitted him for ascending the pure and undefiled <laughs> throne of thirty pagan kings. You know, at him. least he knows himself. But by and by, he said, he would return. As soon as Some he people felt don't have that kind of self-awareness. For the nonce, to however, he proposed no to sail about something. and sow his wild oats in all four oceans. They had made a harpooner of him, and that barbed iron was in lieu of a scepter now. I asked him what might be his immediate purpose touching his future movements. He answered to go to sea again in his old vocation. Upon this, I told him that whaling was my own design, and informed him of my intention to sail out of Nantucket. I bet to Queequeg, though, it seemed like he was just saying that on the spur. Oh, yeah, I was definitely going to whale, too. He had once resolved yeah, no, I was to thinking accompany about it, me to that actually. island, ship aboard the same vessel, get into hmm, the same watch, scope the, the, same missiles, boat, the same mess with me, in short, to share my every I half. Think the missiles could with be both my useful. hands and his, boldly dip into the potluck of both worlds. I do like the to scope. To all this, I joyously assented. I do like the scope. For besides the affection I now felt for Queequeg, he was an experienced harpooner. Missiles, man. And as such, could not fail to be I of bet great I can usefulness the first to one who, them. like me, was wholly ignorant of the mysteries of whaling, though well acquainted with the sea, as known to merchants, seamen. Yes, that is the important thing. His story being ended with his pipe's last dying puff, Queequeg embraced me, pressed his forehead against mine, and blowing out the light, we rolled over from is each this other way this way and that, and very soon were sleeping. Ah, uh, I see. I've gotten a little turned around. I'm going to go back. End of chapters 10 through 12. We are making progress in the book. And in the game, I guess. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox I mean, recordings go back. are in the public domain. If I go back, I mean, I'll have to go For back more information in either thing. Or to volunteer, it's not like please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Stuart Wills. But you know what? We can have fun Moby with it. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. We can enjoy Chapters ourselves. Chapters 13 Am I make that through 15. I'll just walk. I don't want to Chapter jump. 13. That's death. Wheelbarrow. Next morning, Monday, after disposing of the embalmed head to a Secret barber found. for a block, I settled my own and comrade's bill, Hello. using, however, my comrade's money. The grinning oh, landlord, beautiful. as well as the boarders, seemed amazingly yes. tickled at the sudden friendship. Folks, if you think that I used the shotgun a lot, Queequeg, you're going to be extremely especially as Peter Coffin's cock and bull super stories shotgun. about him had previously uh, almost so much alarmed me concerning the very person whom I now accompanied with. We borrowed a wheelbarrow, and embarking That's, our things, including oh, my own poor carpet bag and Queequeg's canvas sack and hammock, Thing. away oh, went down to the moss, like a little that. Nantucket packet schooner ah, moored at the wharf. As we were going along, the people stared, not at Queequeg so much, for they were used to seeing There's cannibals like him nice. in their streets, but at seeing ammo, him and me good. on such confidential terms. But we heeded them not. Going along, wheeling the barrow by turns. I remember now something and then bad. To adjust the sheath on his harpoon bad bars. shows up. I asked him why he carried such a troublesome thing with him ashore, 
and whether all whaling ships did not find their own harpoons. To this, in substance, he replied that, though what I go. hinted was true enough, there you are. yet he had a particular affection for his own harpoon, because it was of a true well tried in many a mortal thing. combat, and deeply intimate with the power of whales. Power. In short, like many That's inland it's all about. reefers and mowers, oh, who go into the farmer's mission. meadows armed with their own sides, though in no wise obliged to furnish so if I got them, all the challenges. even so Queequeg, for his yeah, own private reasons, preferred his own ago. harpoon. Was that it? Was that really the whole battle? Shifting the barrow there from my ends? hand to his, he told me a funny story I about the first ends. wheelbarrow he had sort ever of. seen. It was in Sag Harbor. The owners of his ship, it seems, had lent him one in which to carry his heavy mm. chest to his boarding house. Okay. Not to seem ignorant there about the thing, though in truth he was entirely so concerning the precise way in which to manage the barrow. Queequeg put his chest upon it, lashes it fast, and then ah. shoulders the barrow and marches up the wharf. Why, said I, Queequeg, you might have known better than that, one would think. Didn't the people laugh? Upon this, he told me another story. The people of his island of Cocovoco, it seems, at their wedding feasts, express yeah. the fragrant water yeah. of young coconuts good. into a large stained calabash like a punch bowl. And this punch bowl always forms the great central ornament on the braided mat where the feast is held. Sounds pretty good. Now, a certain grand merchant ship once touched at Cocovoco, and its commander, uh, from all accounts, a very stately, punctilious gentleman, at least for a sea captain. This commander was invited to the wedding feast of Queequeg's sister, a pretty young princess just turned of ten. Well, when all the wedding guests were assembled at the bride's bamboo cottage, this Are captain we, I don't know, marches in. I don't know if we're supposed to think that's honor, placed himself young over against the punch bowl, or and like how... Priest, I know we're supposed Majesty to think that's young, King, right? Queequeg's father. Like, obviously, being said, yes, 10 is young. People have but how young are we supposed we, to think that is told relative to 1850s? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because modern times, that's really young. Upward to the great but giver of all I don't know what the race, I say, 1850s... Being said, the high priest okay, one more guard, two more secrets, by the one more ceremony of the island. I gotta remember that is, where the, uh, dipping his consecrated and consecrated I totally missed the secret map. The I gotta go back. Sorry, folks. Circulates. Seeing himself placed next to the priest, remembering that I missed the a secret, and feels thinking bad. himself being captain of a There's ship, still a collective as having got plain to, right? yeah. over a mere So that's where the two secrets king, are. Especially in the king's own house, the captain coolly proceeds to wash his hands in the punch bowl, no. taking it, I suppose, for a huge finger glass. <laughs> now, said Queequeg, <laughs> what do you think now? Didn't our people laugh? At last, passage paid and luggage safe. We stood on board the schooner. Hoisting sail, it glided okay. down the accustomed river. On one side, New Bedford Somewhere. rose in terraces of streets, their ice-covered trees all glittering in the it's clear, this. cold That's air. Huge hills and mountains of casks on casks were piled upon her wharves, and side by side, the world-wandering whale ships lay silent and safely moored at last. While from others What's came a sound of carpenters and coopers with blended noises of fires and forges to melt the pitch, all betokening that new cruises were on here. the start, that one most perilous and long voyage ended only begins a second, and a second there. ended only begins a third, and so on, forever and for aye. Dang. Such is the endlessness, yea, the intolerableness of all earthly effort. That's what I thought we would Gaining be experiencing. Gaining the more open water, endlessness and intolerableness, fresh, but uh, we actually the haven't. Moss tossed the quick We've been a little fortunate not as to young uh, cold, his have that be an issue. How I snuffed that tartar air. How I spurned that turnpike earth. That common highway all over dented with the marks of slavish heels and hoofs and turned me to admire the magnanimity of Around the sea here, which will permit no records. At the same foam fountain, Queequeg seemed to drink and we reel with forward. me. We were going this his way. His dusky nostrils swelled apart. He showed his filed and pointed teeth. On, on we flew. And There's our a lever and some slight backtracking. homage to the blast, ducked and dived her bows as a slave be? before the sultan. Sideways leaning, we sideways darted every rope yarn tingling like a wire, the two tall masts buckling like Indian canes in land tornadoes. 
So full of this reeling scene were we, as we stood by the plunging bowsprit, that for some time we did not notice the jeering glances of the passengers, oh, a lover-like assembly, what? who marveled that two fellow beings should be so companionable, as though a white <laughs> man were anything more dignified than a whitewashed negro. But there were some boobies and bumpkins there who, by their intense greenness, must have come from the heart and center of all verdure. Queequeg <laughs> caught one of these young saplings mimicking him behind his back. I thought the bumpkin's he hour of doom was him. come. Dropping his harpoon, the brawny savage caught him in his arms, and by an almost miraculous dexterity and strength sent him high up bodily into the air. Then, slightly tapping his stern in mid-somerset, the fellow landed with bursting lungs upon his feet, while Queequeg, turning his back upon him, lighted his tomahawk pipe and passed it to back me here. for a puff. This Captain, is all going to be worth Captain, it, folks. Captain, yelled the bumpkin, running towards that officer. Captain, Captain, here's the devil. <laughs> Hello, you, sir. You really, oh, there the it Captain, is. You really did this guy dirty in the voices. Stalking up to Queequeg. What in thunder do you mean by that? Don't you know you might have killed that chap? <laughs> what him say, said Queequeg, as he mildly turned to me. This captain sounds a lot he like say, the said I, uh, that you came priest, near Tilly, who that sounds a lot like there, the, uh, pointing to the still shivering owner of the horn. spectacle, spouty whale, Tilly, or whatever it was called, cried Queequeg, twisting his tattooed face There's into an unearthly here. expression of disdain. I don't have the ah, key. him bevy small fishy. Queequeg no killy so smally fishy. Queequeg killy big whale. <laughs> Look you, roared the captain. I'll killy you, you cannibal, if you try any more of your tricks aboard here. Funny. So mind your eye. I'll kill but it whale. so happened just killy then whale. that it was high time for the captain to mind his own eye. The prodigious right, strain upon the, the mainsail had parted the weather sheet, and the tremendous boom was now flying from side to side completely sweeping the entire after part of the deck. The poor fellow whom Queequeg had handled so roughly was swept overboard. All hands were in a panic, and to attempt snatching at the boom to stay it seemed madness. It flew from right to left and back again, almost in one ticking of a watch, and every instant seemed on the point of yeah, snapping into splinters. Nothing was done, and nothing seemed capable of being done. Those on deck really rushed here. toward the bows and stood eyeing explored, the boom right? as if it were the lower jaw of an exasperated whale. In the midst the of level? this consternation, yeah. Queequeg dropped yeah. deftly to his knees we and crawling rune, under the path of a the secret boom, and a guard. whipped hold of a rope, secured one end to the bulwarks, right, and then flinging party. the other like a lasso, caught it round the boom as it swept over his head. And at the next jerk, the spar was that he's way around, trapped and all was safe. The but schooner was run into the wind. Where are all the enemies? And while the hands were clearing away the stern boat, Queequeg, stripped there to supposed the waist, to be enemies at started point? from the side with a long, living arc of a leap. For three minutes or more, <laughs> I, he was seen I, have I bugged like the dog, game somehow? throwing his long arms straight out before him and by turns revealing his brawny shoulders through the freezing here. foam. I looked at the grand and glorious fellow but saw no one to be saved. Okay. The greenhorn had gone down. down below. Shooting himself perpendicularly from the water, Queequeg now took an instant glance around him and, seeming to see just how matters were, dived down and disappeared. The rune. A few minutes more, and he rose again, one arm still striking out, I and guess, with the other well, dragging What was going on with form. that gore nest? The boat soon picked them what up. What was going on there? The poor bumpkin was restored. I feel like we should go back. All hands voted Queequeg a noble trump. The captain begged his pardon. From that yeah, hour, I clothed Queequeg like a barnacle. Yay. Yeah, there we go. Queequeg took his last long dive. Was there ever such unconsciousness? He did not seem to think that he had all deserved a medal from the humane and magnanimous societies. Here we go. He only asked for water. Goodbye. Fresh water, something to wipe the brine off. That done, he put on dry clothes, lighted his pipe, Mind and leaning off. against the bulwarks and mildly eyeing those around him, seemed to be saying to himself, it's a mutual joint stock world in all meridians. We cannibals must help these Christians. <laughs> See, the super Chapter shotgun 14. is tasty. Nantucket. Good stuff. Nothing more happened on the passage worthy of mentioning, so after a fine run, we safely ah, arrived delicious. in Nantucket. Nantucket. And now I feel satisfied. Take out you know? your map I know I didn't break the game, and See it's what not going to restart the level. See what a real corner of the world it occupies. Going here, how it stands there, jump away around, offshore, do various more things. More lonely than the Eddystone Lighthouse. A comfort, Look at it. a, a mere heart and elbow of sand, 
All you don't see that collectible without a background. Which makes me think. There is more oh, no. sand there it's than you would there. use in 20 years as a substitute for blotting paper. Some okay. games we'll and whites will we'll tell you that they have to plant weeds there, that they don't grow naturally, that they import Canada thistles, that they have to send beyond seas for a spile hmm. to stop a leak in an oil cask, that pieces of wood in Nantucket are carried about like bits of the true cross. Okay, yeah, 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 decades on that science. People I'm trying to listen to, toadstools trying to listen to Moby Dick, dude. To get under the shade in summertime, that one blade zones? of grass I feel like makes I'm, an I'm missing oasis a zone three over there. blades in a day's walk a prairie. You know what they say, leave no zone unturned. Shoes, something like Laplander snowshoes. That they are so shut up, belted about, every way enclosed, surrounded, and made an utter island of by the ocean, that to their very chairs and tables, small clams will sometimes be found adhering, as to the backs of sea turtles. <laughs> but these I don't think that's true. only show Ishmael. that Nantucket is no Illinois. Look now at the wondrous <laughs> additional mean? story of how this island was settled by the red men. Thus goes the legend. In olden times, an eagle swooped down upon the New England coast and carried off an infant Indian in its talons. With loud laments, the parents hmm, I don't saw think their this child either. born out of sight over the wide waters. Eaten? They resolved to follow in the same direction. Setting out in their canoes after a perilous passage, they discovered the island, and there they found an empty ivory casket, the poor little Indian's skeleton. What wonder, then, Yikes. that these Nantucketers, born on a beach, should take to the sea for a livelihood. They first caught crabs and quahogs in the sand. Grown bolder, they waded out with nets for mackerel. More experienced, they pushed off in boats and captured cod. Let's start the cod. challenge. And at last, launching a navy of 30 ships barrels the with the sea, pistol. Think we can do it, folks. World, put an incessant belt of circumnavigations round it, peeped in at Bering Straits, and in all seasons and all oceans declared everlasting war with the mightiest animated mass that has survived the flood, most monstrous and most mountainous, that Himalayan salt sea mastodon, clothed with such portentousness of unconscious power that his very panics are more to be dreaded than his most fearless and malicious assaults. And thus of these naked Nantucketers, these sea hermits, issuing from their anthill in the sea, overrun and conquered the watery world like so many Alexanders, parceling out among them the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans as the three pirate powers did Poland. I have to Let exhibit America some pride Mexico, here for the Texas and pile Cuba upon Canada. Massachusettsians, Nantucketers. All, all right, that was pretty their easy. blazing banner from the sun. Two-thirds of this terraqueous globe are the Nantucketers, for the sea is his. He owns it as emperor's own empires. That's me. Other I own the sea. but a right of way through it. Merchant ships are but extension bridges, armed ones but floating forts. Even pirates and Boy, I hope I don't die. It's actually been... I know the, road, the point of this is for me to die over and over ships, again and have that experience, of land, like but um, themselves, it's really been such a long time I've been playing this level. Deep itself. I know I'm taking it the too slow. I've got to move faster. He alone resides and riots on the sea. He alone, At least I know where Bible all the stuff language, is. Goes down to it in ships. Which one should we fro, use? Plowing it as his own special plantation. I feel like this there one's is actually home. maybe more useful there for lies his my business, play style. Which a Noah's flood would not interrupt, though it overwhelmed all the millions in China. He lives on the sea as prairie cocks in the prairie. He hides among the waves. He climbs often said the that, shamwa you know. hunters climb the Alps. For years he knows not the land, so that when he comes to it at last, it smells like another world, more strangely than the moon would to an earthman. With the landless gull that at sunset folds her wings and is rocked to sleep between billows, so at nightfall the Nantucketer, the out zone? of sight of land, furls his sails and lays him to his rest, while under his very pillow rush herds of walruses and whales. <laughs> Chapter 15, is, uh, Chowder. Yep. It was quite Chowder. late in the evening when the little moss came snugly right, so we got? and Queequeg and I we went got all the stuff. We so have we all the stuff but one no elite guard. That day. At least and that appears to be near the end here. Bed. The Are we almost done? Spouter Inn had recommended I think we're almost done, done, actually. Hosea That's kind of crazy. Of tripots, whom he asserted to be the proprietor of one of the best-kept hotels in is all Is something Nantucket. terrible going to happen to me that I've missed? But Cousin Hosea, as he called him, was famous for his chowders. 
In short, he plainly hinted that we could not possibly do better than try potluck at the tripods. <laughs> the directions he had given us about keeping a yellow this is a, this is a classic bit if you go to new england larger, now i can say this is somebody who is uh, cursorily familiar with uh, new england and that done, behavior then the culture etc um these crooked directions men on the street will just tell you to try their chowders it's kind of a, at the outset Queequeg insisted that the you know, like the business card scene in American Psycho? It's like that, but with um, milk-based soups. All right, it's about However, to get nuts in here because I see a power-up. All I have to do is hold out a little bit and not die. And we'll try the missiles. How do these do against that guy? Oh! Of an old top mast okay, don't, don't get too... Doorway. Don't get ahead the of yourself, Griffin. The cross trees were sawed off on the other side so that this old top mast looked not a little like the gallows. Perhaps I was oversensitive to such impressions at the time, oh, no, 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 but no, no, I could no. not help staring at this gallows. Let's go nuts. A sort of trick was in my neck as I gazed at the two remaining horns. Yes, two of them. One for Queequeg and one for me. It's ominous, thinks I. A coffin Did I survive? My upon landing in my first Was that the whole fight? Tombstone staring at me in the Whaleman's Chapel, and here okay. a gallows, and a pair of prodigious. Am I on the right difficulty? Too. Are these last throwing out oblique hints touching Tophet? I was called from these reflections by the sight of a freckled woman with yellow hair check, and a yellow I'm, gown standing in the porch of the inn. I'm pretty sure I'm on the right difficulty. Lamp swinging and, there um, that looked much like an injured eye and carrying a on a brisk scolding with a man in a purple woolen shirt. There is one down below. And they Get along with you, she said to the man, or I'll Sorry, be combing you. Come on, Queequeg, said I. All right, there's Mrs. Hussey. Mrs. And Hussey. so it turned out, <laughs> Mr. Hosea Hussey being from home, but leaving Mrs. Hussey entirely competent to attend to all his affairs. Upon making known our desire for hear about supper the, and a bed, the chowder Mrs. Hussey, fight? postponing further scolding for the present, ushered us into a little room. All right, that feels and better. Us we won't be entering the next level with low the relics of a recently concluded repast. We gotta go turned back round up, to us and said, so "Clam or cod." Dude, What's clam. What's about cods, ma'am? Said I with much politeness. Clam or cod? She repeated. A clam for supper. A cold clam? Is that what you mean, Mrs. Hussey? No, it's a chowder. I. The chowder. But that's a rather cold and clammy reception in the winter time, ain't it, Mrs. Hussey? Dude, but are you... being in a great hurry to resume scolding the man in the purple shirt, are you having a lark right now? Who was waiting for it in the entry, and seeming to hear nothing but the word clam? Mrs. Hussey hurried towards an open door leading to the kitchen. Okay, I'm stopping out, here. We made it through the level, two, folks. Disappeared. But we're going to pick up at 1932 in the next level, and we're going to hear this chowder. And the next level is, I think it's it's the platforming one, and I will almost certainly die to platforming. Um, I don't think I died this time, which is pretty fortunate. But... I'll die to platforming, and then we'll hear about the start of this chowder over and over again. It's going to be incredible. Um, yeah, let me push the button. And it's, it's, this is the end, right? Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I cheated. Queequeg, said I. Do I didn't finish the level. I was so, supper for us both on I was so clam. ready to, for it to be However, done, but I've got to watch a cutscene first. However, a warm steam from the kitchen served to belie the apparently cheerless prospect before us. But when There's... that smoking chowder came in, oh. the mystery was delightfully explained. <laughs> oh, sweet friends, hearken to me. It was made of small, juicy clams, scarcely bigger than hazelnuts. <laughs> this is a perfect pairing. Ship biscuit, Watching the Doom Slayer punch into part a part. Uh... The whole enriched with butter and plentifully seasoned with pepper and salt. <laughs> Our appetites being sharpened by the frosty voyage and in particular... This is like eating a good clam chowder. ...his favorite fishing food before him and the chowder being surpassingly excellent, we dispatched it with great expedition. When, leaning back a moment, and bethinking me of Mrs. Hussey's clam and cod announcement, I thought I would try a little experiment. Stepping to the kitchen door, I uttered the word, COD, with great emphasis. Are you just trying to get another seat? In a few moments, <laughs> the savory steam came forth again. Ishmael, this is called doubles, flavor, and it's shameful. And in good time, a fine cod chowder was placed before us. 
We resumed business, and while plying our spoons All in right. the bowl, now I to myself, I wonder now if this here <laughs> has any effect on the head. What's that stultifying well, saying about we'll pick it up. People? We'll pick it up at, at 21 weekly, minutes. Thanks for watching Moby Doom. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, see you next time.